we're going to talk about uh, ChatGPT. Um, I've been playing with ChatGPT Chat GPT and GPT um, three and multiple models on AP, OpenAI for probably the last six months at this point. Um, I've really, really enjoyed uh, playing with this technology, learning how it works. Um, I have a big history in data and machine learning operations, um, specifically building and leading those teams. Um, and I've just had just a ton of fun with this. I think a lot of you all probably have too. Um, I don't pretend to be an expert, but boy, I spent a lot of time with it. Um, why am I interested in it? There's a fundamental question, I think, on the floor with regard to the rise of this technology. Um, as Martin uh, pointed out, it's going to be huge this year and it's just going to get bigger and bigger. The big question is, is AI going to take your job? I don't think so, at least not anytime soon. But I think people who are very good at using this technology uh, will be very competitive and may you might not be replaced by AI, but you might be replaced by somebody who is uh, tenfold more uh, productive using these tools. Uh, what can you do? Um, I think that you learn how these tools work and you figure out how you uh, take advantage of them to do uh, your jobs more effectively. Um, we've looked at good help Copilot before. Um, certainly people have discussed using ChatGPT. I think in the beginning we were talking about using ChatGPT to uh, write recipes and shopping lists and things for folks. Um, there's a lot this technology can do with both in your professional and personal life. Figure it out. I think that's the, the, the message I would give people here is this is super important and super powerful. So you want to figure this out. Um, I'm spending a bunch of time writing up articles and things on this. I primarily post them on LinkedIn, but also on my medium. My goal in doing that is twofold. Um, the first is I'm kind of obsessed with it. So I just kind of want to write down my thinking and ideas. And the second is as this revolution happens, I really would like it to be true that nobody gets left behind that people learn how to use these tools um, universally. So that secondly, um, I just wanna re-emphasize re this because I think people, I've certainly read plenty of people getting concerned about their job. There's uh, a really great guide that I would sort of point out that's linked in this, that was actually written by uh, the government of Singapore that talks about how to actually evaluate jobs um, and figure out the tasks in those jobs such that the workers could be augmented by AI to improve their productivity and their effectiveness. Um, so I'll leave that as an exercise to the reader once you get these slides, but that's a really great guide, pretty extensive, well-written. Um, lastly, uh, I mentioned this before, I think Martin and I were talking, just the rise of these models. Um, so a slide here that kind of showcases the fact that these models are dramatically increasing in scope and power. Uh, and then that uh, roughly looks like a doubling every 10 months. Um, noting that GPT is three years old, um, that means the models that are going to be coming out this year are going to be substantially more powerful than what we're presently seeing with, say, ChatGPT, which is kind of scary and awesome if you think about it. So just a reminder, right, get, don't sleep on this. Um, moving into principles. So I'm a principles thinker. Um, how I try and approach things is uh, problem spaces as identifying kind of underlying principles to how things work and then leveraging those principles to be successful. Um, I've thought through kind of different principles that I've uh, started to use when thinking about how to interact with say ChatGPT or other GPT type systems, other large language models like GPT-3 or when GPT-4 comes out or Bloom, which is an open source version that I think uh, came from um, Salesforce. Anyway, I've got five principles. You could have five, you could have 10, there's a lot, but these are the ones that I often think about when I'm trying to be successful with these tools. Um, the first one is I like to use what I refer to as a priming prompt. Um, that priming prompt guides how ChatGPT is going to work with me, um, how we're going to sort of, I'll put this in quotes, partner. Um, that priming prompt includes uh, behavioral guidelines, how I want it to behave. It, it also includes writing style, how I want the text it produces to read, write tone, diction, formality, um, lots of other factors. Um, I also include how to create macros, like different ways of having short programs that, believe it or not, ChatGPT can execute. Um, principle number two, build and maintain a library of prompts. Um, the, the, all these get expanded in, in a moment in other slides, but building a library of prompts to really help you create repeatable experiences with these tools is really powerful. So just creating a list of common tasks maybe you do in your personal life, recipes for uh, the food you've got in your refrigerator or shopping lists or ideas for businesses or what have you, and also prompts that would help you with your work, right? Um, there are prompts I've seen in the wild of people who 
uh, are using this technology to help improve the code they've written, find bugs, um, and lots of different techniques and tools like that. Um, number three, this one is a little bit more, um, a little bit harder to grasp initially, which is number three, layer context and guidance. So as you are communicating with, say, ChatGPT, and you want to have a really effective output come out of that session, you can like layer in ideas from different thinkers or ideas um, that you pull out of the model, give it guidance as you go along, and then in the end, have all of that space get emitted out as some sort of cohesive output, like an essay or a table or what have you. Um, principle number four, meta prompting. I think this is a fun one where you're basically getting ChatGPT to help create and author prompts. Um, that one's super powerful. Um, you can ask it to write the prompt for the thing you want, and then you can recursively bounce back and forth between a fresh session of ChatGPT and an existing session where you're refining the prompt, and you can iteratively improve. I found that's really sped up my ability to create a variety of different prompts to solve a bunch of different kinds of problems. Um, lastly, the one uh, principle I'm most excited about right now is this is actually how we can think about building actually very powerful um, and durable, say, businesses is this idea of combining AI with other sources. So there's a really great library called Langchain, which is just a few months old, um, that creates a huge number of helper functions for chaining prompts together accessing external sources of information like Wolfram Alpha or Google searches, feeding those into prompts and then having a subsequent prompt happen after. Um, this is in essence how GitHub Copilot works um, or other tools that, that create just outsized value for people who are using them. They, they chain prompts together, pull information from outside sources and then give you answers back. So um, I'm gonna pause. Is everybody sort of tracking this? I know I'm speaking pretty quickly. Is this all making sense so far? If you have never worked with ChatGPT, you probably are a little puzzled by this, but I think probably a lot of you have. Could you give an example of a verbatim prompt? I, yeah. Yeah. I've read articles about prompt engineering, but I've, I've never seen what, what the text of a prompt looks like. Is it a sentence? Is it a paragraph? Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. So I have a, I have a little video that I'm going to play because I wanted to prevent the demo gods from stomping all over my good day um, here in a minute that will show exactly that. So just bear with me and you will see. Um, so actually, why don't we skip to that? Um, we'll go to priming prompt. Uh, what is a priming prompt? So I spoke about that a little bit before, but this is where you provide the initial context for ChatGPT uh, to function. So I have a video here that will start. Um, I think I need to make sure I'm sharing my audio or this is going to sound bad. Let me hey make sure. We're going to talk about priming prompts today. Oop. We're a pretty decent one. One second. That sounds okay on our side. Does it sound okay? Okay. I'll go up on LinkedIn about this. I'll win your chat TV game, crafting an effective priming prompt. The article walks through a bunch of different topics, uh, that's why you might want to build a priming prompt, what that is, talks about how to build a tool chain to improve your prompt engineering and how this fits into that tool chain. We walk through a couple of different principles, but really the fastest way to get a feel for how this works is just to get going. So up on GitHub, I have my priming prompt. I just copied and I'm going to show to you in a minute. It's got a bunch of things in it. I define what my writing style is, which I can walk through in a future video how you actually have ChatGPT help you figure out what your writing style is. This is mine. I provide a bunch of rules for how I want ChatGPT to work with me. One of the things ChatGPT is it's very verbose. So I first off tell it, avoid describing your own behavior avoid getting ahead of yourself, a few other things. I also can find some interesting tools to help edit your prompt. So those are here. And then I go into some actual macros, which is what we're going to spend time on today looking at. Improving text, there's a Twitter in your macro to build Twitter threads out of text. And then there's a fun little macro I built that just is around describing words when you run into kind of a novel word. I also close on this prompt with an important point, which hopefully doesn't always work, but hopefully will avoid a chat GPT being verbose when you give it this prompt. 
So let's see how it goes. Perfect. So it read this. Now what is true is it has this in its memory, as it were. And so let's say that I wanted to take a piece of text. Let's say that I was working on my resume. And let's say that I wanted to use the text improve macro, which is IT. You give it the text, put it in curly braces so it knows that's the text it should be improving, and away it goes. So it's taken a minute. Every time you submit new, it is going to run through this, run through the command, spend some time thinking, and of course, chat GPT is busy right now. So it's taken a minute. All right, in the macro, I specifically ask it when it's improving text, I say to look for specific and focused improvements. I ask it to format the recommendations in a markdown table, and then, it will implement the change that it's recommending. So what does it say? So I'll pause the video here and I'll kind of skip ahead a little bit. Um, but this is an example of that notion of a priming prompt, right? That I'm trying to impress upon you all the value of. Because you can uh, give it preset commands macros. You can sp state specifically what you want it to do. Um, and it can follow those directions and enter in kind of into an interactive mode, which is what we're doing here with this text improve. This is sort of the most complicated prompt that I've developed so far. Um, simpler prompts, um, there's some links in the presentation to, to go with the prior questioner's uh, uh, question. Um, but this is incredibly powerful. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit because this has got a few more minutes. But if we take a look at kind of the end state here. I told it my writing style. So it has recommendations. So we've got these different recommendations that it's making. Background, thing style. So it has a sense of how I want to come across. And so as it's making these recommendations, that context is being taken into account. How much? It's not a deterministic system. So it's pretty difficult to tell how much. But certainly when I've implemented this macro when I didn't tell my writing style or when I used a different writing style, say from a brand guideline for a company, its recommendations were different. And of course, you can see it is giving us a change number, the original text, the recommended change, the reason for change. Formatting this all as a table is super handy. It's asking which suggestion would you like me to make? So I can ask it to implement a specific suggestion or all suggestions. Let's just pick some. So we're going to pick one and four. I'm going to ask it to implement changes one and four. So at this point, we asked it to implement instead of I have deep experience in building a leading team. So I'll pause right there. Um, so that's an example of what you could use priming prompts for, right? Give it instructions, define macros that serve. Uh, serve you in different ways. Um, incredibly powerful to set the initial context of your sessions with ChatGPT with those kinds of tools. Um, does anybody have any questions about that? There's more in that video and I encourage you to check it out if you're interested in sort of seeing more how that all plays out, um, but it's super powerful. But any, any questions? Is that useful? I don't know, when I got ChatGPT to behave in that kind of interactive manner, my mind was pretty blown. Jeff has a question in the chat, I think. Oh, okay. I don't think I'm seeing chat. Um, I'll just here we go. Ask it. So, I, you know, I, I understood the purpose of the priming, but you were, do, you were trying to achieve some goal with that table building, and I, I didn't catch that. Yeah. So what was happening there with the table building is I'd set it into an interactive mode where it was um, basically executing uh, a macro that I was defining in this prompt. So it was entering into sort of a mode here where it was seeking to improve the text that I gave it based upon the writing rules that I defined in the prompt here. 
And so it would essentially go through that text, find improvements, tell me why it thought that improvement should be made. And then I could specify a command after it uh, identified various improvements and it would, it would actually make each one of those improvements in that table. So I could say, okay, make improvement one and four, um, which is just like phenomenally powerful, right? To be able to define in essence, here's like a program to run like that um, is just pretty crazy. Does that make sense? It, yes, it does. All right. Um, so moving on, um, meta prompting, talking a little bit about that. Um, use ChatGPT to write its own prompts. I don't have a video for that uh, or a, a demo I want to do because it's kind of involved. But this is a pretty powerful technique that I touched upon in the intro for this section, just the notion of going back and forth. And generally speaking, um, you can ask it to create a prompt, then you can use ChatGPT to actually help refine the prompt that you got based upon the outputs that it creates. And you can bounce back and forth between a fresh GPT window and an existing one to actually write your own prompts. Um, and that is a big part of how I've kind of created just a huge library of different prompts um, because I've been able to bounce back and forth um, and use this technique. Lastly, the thing I think I'm most excited about um, honestly, is this tool called Langchain. Um, Langchain is where you're, uh, it's a Python library that allows you to chain together different prompts. Um, I've got a video on that one as well. There's a project um, that's linked here, this Hugging Face project. So we'll take a quick peek at this. This one's pretty short. So we'll just play All this. All right, folks, we're going to look at using Langchain GPT 3.5, the Hugging Face. And watched as it is able to use a multitude of different external services to answer questions. It's a really lovely project was put together and you can find it on our face. So let's ask a simple question that I think is going to trigger Langchain to the need to talk to the chat GPT 3.5 and then go out and actually hit Wolfram Alpha. So a simple question, what is the circumference? The Earth, circumference of the Earth, twenty-four thousand nine hundred point four six miles. Let's make it polite. Let's give us let's show the reasoning in the chat bubble. Who it is? Let's ask it another question. Who is the president of the United States? Who knows that. There have been some finicky issues here. Okay, do we need tool? Yes. Joe Biden. So we can get emotions. What else can we get here? Other settings, speed text from agents. Oh, that'll be fun. All right, what's the third question we should ask? How many lakes are in the United States? And I'm making that one up right now. How many lakes are there in the United States? Let's see if you can answer that question thinking. What is it thinking? We might have hit an case or an error. Number of lakes. Looks like there are 3,297 lakes in the United States. All of them up. So that's using our new face, the project that is combining GPT 3.5 plus Langchain and a variety of different external APIs that it's calling. So that is, as I said, I think I'm most excited about in the space right now is the rise of, of using this Langchain library uh, to combine together different kinds of data sources. But as you saw, it's smart enough to be able to figure out the nature of the question and then where it should go uh, to get an answer to that question and then format that answer back using um, a prompt that's baked into Langchain itself. Um, you can go look at the code out on um, uh, Hugging Face. Where is that? Is that the link? I'll have to fix the link here. But um, you can go and actually look at the code. Um, it's all out there. Uh, and it is just phenomenal what you can do with this library, these different APIs, and uh, large language model like 
uh, GPT-3.5. Um, so I kind of did a speed run through here because uh, I kind of want to leave some time for discussion and questions. Um, what other questions do folks have? Yeah, I have a question. Whoever is speaking is super quiet. Um, my question is, so this um, prompt priming, it's yeah. like it could be obsoleted if the AI had like persistent memory of who you were, right? So you just train it once and then for the rest of eternity, it, it knows who you are. Yeah, that, that certainly could be true. Although um, you may want to switch aspects of sort of the, the context you're providing initially for a given session. So writing style being an example of that or specific commands or macros. But yeah, I think one of the criticisms of prompt engineering, which I reject is the notion that as the AIs get better and better and learn more and more that uh, eventually we will not need to be doing prompt engineering. I think maybe there's a point in time when that's true, but I don't think it's any time soon. So um, I would say that uh, just to directly address it, I think having some sort of prompt like this now, especially for say um, sessions where you want to build up context and you want to start with something it's it's super powerful yeah in the end will it maybe lose its utility yeah but that's probably uh years away it's a good question any other questions comments the lang chain oh. is really neat to see <clears throat> i've seen um some examples of um, Google's um, robot training framework that work mm -hmm. a little bit like that with like the internal thought process. Um, and that's just pretty neat to see that like iteration. Yeah, yeah, it's really powerful. There's a bunch of, um, uh, there's a number of tutorials on LangChain that I've kind of walked through um, using LangChain and using safe, this vector database where you can go and index, uh, say a bunch of in, uh, Wikipedia articles was one particular example. And then you can, walk through and get you can posit a specific question that will look for an answer to that question in its vector database um, and then format the answer for you, which is pretty slick. Um, a couple of resources that I do want to underline here. I think there was a question about prompts. There's a link in here to uh, a big book of prompts that I wrote a while back. Um, this one's really oriented around sort of easy examples. So very simple prompts summarization, asking questions, um, you know, writing emails for customer service and so forth. So that's a really great place to look to just sort of see what's possible. Um, there's another uh, great prompt book um, maintained by, uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but um, yeah, Alan Thompson. This is a great source for prompt and prompt ideas as well. He goes through a bunch of different basic prompts. He's kind of curated from around the internet. Um, so there's some really good resources in here. And of course I provide uh, the gists and things. If you want to go take a look at those, this is a fun interactive game you can play with ChatGPT. Um, so take a look. Um, I'll publish this uh, out to the, to the group. Um, and if you have any questions for me, feel free to reach out um, on LinkedIn or your chat, uh, your, your communication method of choice. But happy to answer more questions.